Please be seated. This honorable house now resumes its sitting. First, let me apologize for a late start due to matters that appears not in my control. When we were here last, we were dealing with the investment bill, and I think we were at the stage where the premier, the move of the motion, is now required to wrap up the bill. I will also say to the Honorable Premier that I want to suggest to invoke Standing Order 38.1 to remember to keep your comments confined to the bill. With that said, I call upon the Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance and member for the first district, the Honorable Andrew A. Foy. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I rise to close off this debate that started uh, today would be uh, a week and a day since it started, and it is on the debate of the Virgin Islands, Mr. Speaker, Investment Act. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank everyone for their input on this debate, on this act. However, Mr. Speaker, I must say that while you have said that we keep the contents to the to the bill, I have to say that after I have heard some of the debate by 50% of the opposition, I'm convinced that they did not, respectfully, that they did not read the bill or they intentionally did a debate outside of the contents of the bill. I say that, Mr. Speaker, because in the bill, nowhere does it speak to focusing just on foreign investment and in, or investors to come in to take over this country from the people of the Virgin Islands. That is a sensitive topic that, that um, some of the members of the opposition know that once they say that and it gets in the news, that it will, it will uh, resonate in the people's ears as something negative and, and um, try to put the government further in a negative light, which is what uh, about 50% of them are doing from the opposition on the street daily. Uh, giving their twists to things that are not so because they realize our people are so busy they don't get to read all of the legislation or some don't get to read any of the legislation. But with due respect, Mr. Speaker, this bill is for Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020. This was started, Mr. Speaker, one of those bills that started under the last administration and uh, it never saw the light of day when it started. Uh, um, Mr. Speaker, we heard the Deputy Speaker actually stated that, that um, when the Leader of Opposition got up and said that he was for the bill because he's working on it, and the, the Deputy uh, Speaker said that it seems to him that once any bill that they worked on is good but when we bring it, but if they we worked on it from its uh, origin state, uh, then it doesn't get support. Right after that, Mr. Speaker, we saw that there was a disagreement in the House and the Leader of Opposition got up and left the House um, and the House uh, adjourned till a recess, sorry, uh, until today. But Mr. Speaker, we, we, we want to, to make sure that we continue with the right decorum for the House even when we disagree. We cannot be like in the days of marble when we, we feel that we are losing, take up all our marbles and, and leave the marble game. We are doing the people's work and there will be times when there are disagreements and we have to make sure that we handle them accordingly. Mr. Speaker, I need to cover these points because I heard a few things that deviated to make, uh, from the bill that when persons hear these things on the news, they won't know that we were talking about the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020 
all they would know is that um, the member X was speaking and they, they made some good points, which, yes, that's their opinion and it may sound good, but where does the traffic turn around fit into a Virgin Islands Investment Act? I ponder this all weekend and I couldn't find it. But if you don't know that we are discussing the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020, you would say those were powerful comments. And all of a sudden, the, the old ladies can't cross the road. I, don't, I, I never knew that that was an issue. I came into politics, Mr. Speaker, with some of the same members, met them doing a charade, a charrette. One member even called it a charade, um, on how the tongue should be. Inside of that, I still have my copy, included a traffic turn around. Inside of that copy, included the market square improvement. Inside of that copy, Mr. Speaker, included the beautification of the town. And Mr. Speaker, there were many other areas inside of that same little document. So I'm surprised to hear the same member come and condemn the very thing that was one of the ideas that he started. And I guess because they couldn't get it to fruition again, they, they started to call the um, mango sweet sour sap sour because they couldn't get it to sour sap. The fox used to say when he can't get it to sour sap, mango sweet sour sap sour, that's because he couldn't get it to sour sap. But if he had get to the sour sap, he'd have been singing mango sweet sour sap sweet also. But you can't blame this government for taking up the most difficult task like the Minister of Works have done in turn around the traffic. And when you drive into town, Mr. Speaker, you feel like you're driving into the metropolis in, 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 um, in one of those big cities, but yet still have the, 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 the ambience of a small town that's functioning. And Mr. Speaker, the number of crosswalks have been increased by leaps and bounds. And Mr. Speaker, I, I saw many old ladies crossing the road on their own and never had any problem. I, I don't know if a survey was done to, the, to, to know that the, the old people have problems crossing with the, with, the, um, with the traffic, Mr. Speaker. So those are abstract things. The Minister of Works must be commended for the turnaround of the traffic, Mr. Speaker. I have heard some persons who would not always agree that's the democratic process. But at the same time, Mr. Speaker, to, to, to try to make it sound like the majority of people have issues with the turnaround traffic is a little much. We do something in this country that you have to be so careful of, Mr. Speaker. We often say a lot of people saying this. And when you look, in, and look around it, it might be the crowd that you are wrong, which might be 50, 60 to 100. But this country now has about 35,000 people in it. So unless you have half of them saying it, I don't know what a lot means. And did you do a survey to know that this is so? Mr. Speaker, doing nothing cannot be an option. And in this time of where we, need, we have high demands and low limited resources in the middle of COVID-19, this government has done excellent. Not saying that we do not have some areas to improve, many more areas to improve, but show me a government right now in this world that is not experiencing financial challenges, Mr. Speaker. And when we talk about the opposition again, went on to an area that I must touch because I, I sat and I let them speak. I don't, I, I rarely interrupt persons. But I couldn't believe that we were speaking about the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020. Now some people over the weekend tell me, do not comment and, and, and touch those things. Leave them alone and move on. But those very people that believe everything they're saying still turn around and judge me by it. So they have me in a, in a, in a paradox. You cannot leave those things being said in the public domain and have them um, unchal are not challenged. You have to come back and challenge them. When the opposition is going to get up and say, Mr. Speaker, that the infrastructure is bad, and I heard um, different people even by the White House saying the infrastructure needs work on. When the very opposition asked a question for the TIF fund and was able to reveal to the public, not me, not me, they did it, that they, there was 10.5 million dollars in terms of running off that was collected for the transportation improvement network fund and was never put into the fund when there's an act there that 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 uh dictates and uh in 
that the fund dictates that the funds collected the three cents on every gallon of um, uh, fuel goes into the TIF fund for the development of infrastructure in the territory. Mr. Speaker, may I tell you that the question and answer segments reveal that that $10.5 million built up over a period of time and the act was totally ignored and that money was put inside of the consolidated fund, which is part of the cash to help with cash flow and just done many things with no improvement of the infrastructure. Now, Mr. Speaker, they have the hatified audacity, those who did it, to go on the opposition now and ask us for the 10.5 for um, the improvement to the infrastructure in a, in, in, with a government here just two years plus, and it took us after 2019 to recognize and recognize the Minister of Transportation is the one who brought it to my attention that that money is not going into the transportation improvement network fund. And immediately we held a meeting with finance and said, wait, we have to correct this because there's an act that specifically mandates by law that that three cents from every um, fuel that comes in in terms of the charge be put towards that transportation network fund. Mr. Speaker, can I tell this honorable house that failure to do that has resulted in us in $10.5 million that went just like so and no improvements to infrastructure, no want to come and hold my Minister of Works responsible for not doing infrastructure when they were the ones in this who was saying that, but, I, but the facts must come out. When they're the ones who did not put that money in the fund, rather than putting the money in the fund and using it to help the, the infrastructure of this country, they went and borrowed $16 million to do from the Social Security to do roads that up to now we can't see whether the road is smoother, ro more rough in, in the air, whatever, it's worse than ever, and $16 million of the Social Security is gone, but that's not the concern of even those who are trying to look into this young government because there seems to be a pact made with some of them that no matter what happened then, will just go unnoticed. Mr. Speaker, I was here calm and cool, I wasn't going to get up to do this, but the trouble me first. So how could persons raise their, 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 their amplified uh, 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 audacity to come to this house and turn to a two-year government and blame us for the infrastructure of the country and then tell us it's a lot of talk and no action? We spent 18 months of our lives in government since taking over in 2019 fighting COVID. And it's not easy. Look at the members here. You could see the stress on their face because we have to do so many things with less money. And everybody in the system has to do more with less. We had to adjust the budget last year because of, 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 of the expenditures versus the revenue to make sure that we stay in line. And I'm sure we're going to have to do the same thing this year again because you have to keep watching COVID-19. And the last spike required us to put some money into health and other areas that we have to keep reassessing the finances of the country. But there are those in the opposition and those who they work with in the White House who continue to make it look like all we're doing is squandering the people's money. When we really analyze it, Mr. Speaker, we only have been here for two years. We, we even didn't get the chance to do anything that they had accusing us of doing. Mr. Speaker, but you have to say these things. And I challenge anybody who gets annoyed with what I'm saying to go and look for the Transportation Network Improvement Fund. Go and read the act. And then tell me with that act, Mr. Speaker, if that act didn't say that, that the money was to be in it, and then calculate how much monies were, were received by this country from, from, from the time that act was put into place from 2011 straight to, to, to when we identified in 2019. How many, much money wasn't put in there? $10.5 million. So when you add up the Social Security loan plus the $10.5 million, you're looking at $26.5 million that could have gone for infrastructure that we don't have a trace of. And they're coming to us to say that we just talk. Well, we got to talk. Cause where the, where the gone with the money? So we got to talk till we, we get some money. But this is not government that just talk. Mr. Speaker, I know that you watching me and you're saying that keep it to the board, not into investment act. But, but Mr. Speaker, 
whenever you try to stop them, they accuse you of not being fair. But if you stop me now, I'm going to accuse you of not being fair too because I didn't stop them. I need to get some of these things straight now before we move on. And Mr. Speaker, when you analyze it, I heard persons say that, that we, we're going into in the opposition got up. And I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, I challenge them to go to the public. They didn't read this bill. There's no way in this bill that you were giving away the Virgin Islands. And I have some ladies back there. You see how three women back there? The, Any time I even attempt to go do that, which I wouldn't, they'll eat me for fish. And, and to hear the opposition get on making this song that way, except for the leader of opposition who kind of said that he had help work on it. But why didn't it come? Why didn't it go through um, to cabinet and then to the house if you work on it so much years? Because if we leave the investment how it is now, then it comes where it's only going to be done based on, on if the government likes you or if somebody around the government or, or, or their spouse likes you and, 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 and um, you have to pay to play. We're trying to bring good governance inside our investments, whether it's local investments only, local and foreign investments as a partnership, or if a foreign investor comes in so they know clearly what the rules are even before they invest. They know clearly too what are some of the incentives for the local investors, the partnership investors, and the foreign investors if they come to invest. Right now, Mr. Speaker, there is hardly any laws that, 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 that help local investors and any incentives that you could use, any laws that you can use to help give incentives to local investors. There are not much laws for them. And even when they, they, they mention the hotel aid and the um, hotel ordinance and, the, and the, um, the, the, the different things that exist to help investors, the way it is written, and the way we use it, Mr. Speaker, still brings some concern about if we're staying within the confines of the law, especially when it comes to extensions, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying now to make sure that the law is repealed in those areas and then replace it with this new investment act that should have come long ago, that would have helped diversify the economy long ago. Mr. Speaker, you know, I had to touch on a few of those areas, Mr. Speaker, because when I heard members preaching as if we are we, we, um, selling away the BVI with this act, we're giving away the country to, to investors, and we're not going to recognize the country in years to come. Mr. Speaker, I can say unequivocally that I didn't read the bill, but it sounds good. To anybody who don't know, we are debating a bill named the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020. The opposition sounded good, at least 50% of them, by sensitizing the public. But those things are not in the bill. So, Mr. Speaker, I had to start by addressing some of them first, Mr. Speaker, because those things concern me. And, Mr. Speaker, when you look and see in this piece of legislation, this revolutionary, uh, revolutionize, it needed to be revolutionized and modernized the way business is done in the BVI and to make this territory more competitive, secure, and more attractive for business and investment. Mr. Speaker, it's not only this bill that we're working on. We have the, the junior minister of, 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 of trade and the junior minister of tourism. All of them have assignments. And, and, the, and the one of the things the junior minister of trade will tell you, we have the business act coming and many other things that, that is going to be getting off uh, 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 um, through businesses, through trade and through tourism. That should have done, be done, already completed. We should not be in the middle of this pandemic now trying to diversify the economy. And you know the sad thing about it is, the very entities that put us here are the ones that are going to try to hold us accountable to the public for anything that's not done in a short two years that wasn't done after the many years of holding the government. And then, Mr. Speaker, I could unsee it, 
They send out their paid bloggers to try to make people think that I'm here stalking foolishness. And then they, they are strategic hit people on some of those social medias to come at you. Thank God that an old man in my village, name is Alfredo Delville, told me when you get into politics, make sure your constitution's strong. Or else it'll surely make you give up. So my constitution's strong. I learned to, 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 to um, run with patience the, the race set before me. Mr. Speaker, what this act does, it, it provides a clear and transparent framework for investment in the territory, thereby further strengthening good governance. Right now, there's, there are no existing guidelines on how to invest in the BVI, whether foreign, local, or a combination of both. So the act doesn't lean on one side alone, of, of, of foreign investors, it has a section with that, and it should, because if you have a foreign investor coming in here, it should be clear what upfront to tell them what you can and cannot get from investing in the BVI, what incentives you can or cannot receive. It should be clear. It should be no hidden secret like what has been alleged many times. Um, and as they get going, they pay to play. It needs to be clear. So this is what it's doing, and it's, it's creating a vehicle for local investors to come now to the commission and say, I'm investing in this area. Um, can you guide me in the, the incentives that will be needed to invest in this area? It's clear. Not only that, Mr. Speaker, I'll go further. Junior Minister, how many public meetings? There were about seven. Seven public meetings. And with stakeholders over this bill. This building just drop here. When you hear what has been said at least by 50% of the opposition, you will be thinking that we just dropped this building here today and this is the first day I've seen it. And I had never, I, it sound good, but, but my, my, my. If you go on the government site, whenever we let legislation, we put it on the GIS site and we say here is the legislation um, you can review it, especially uh, after the first reading, sorry, is when it goes there. And when it goes there, Mr. Speaker, it is there for all to see. And I usually circulate it for everyone to see. But I realize that there are entities here in this house on the other side that the only thing they're interested in circulating is anything that they feel would put the government in a negative light. But that's their, their, their job. But at least do so with factual things. And do so by sending out all the information and let people make up their mind. Because this bill was out there, there were public meetings, meetings by the Althea Scatliff School, meetings in Virgin Garda, meetings. I remember the meeting over Virgin Garda, Mr. Speaker, when I went over Virgin Garda, the night, the, the, the um, minister, junior minister of, of, of tourism and the minister of natural resources, and my team went over by the ferry, and I got a little late. And I came over by speedboat, and it was so rough, Mr. Speaker. I don't know how we had making it out that night. And by the time I reached up, I only got by the college. And by the time I got by the college, before I could get there, the college had their um, annual science fair and technology fair, beautiful science fair. And Mr. Speaker, they had done taking care of the meeting. Hearty meeting. And, 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 and then you had those on public eye. Those meetings on public eye. So Mr. Speaker, these are things that persons could research and see that there is a chronological order of how these bills came to the house and since they're here, how they were discussed. You can't do that for every bill in terms of having public discourse because some bills will be more weighty, weightier than others. And this is one of them. So we made sure we went out and we harnessed the views of the entire public. Mr. Speaker, we harnessed it. And we also make sure that we incorporate it because there are some changes um, going to be, be allowed in the bill in terms of some uh, things as being going to be inserted that persons have brought to our attention. And we have to craft them in the best way, in the best interest of the people of the Virgin Islands. So, Mr. Speaker, I need to say these things for the record because these bills 
did not just appear here like I'm hearing the opposition saying this is the first they've seen this. Well, where were they for the first reading? I, it come to me like when we don't do the first reading, you have a copy of the bill. And this didn't just come back one for this sitting alone. This was a couple of sittings ago. So don't blame us if you're not reading and staying up to date and substituting it on the street for gossip. Now I must say that the gossip is taking some roots in certain quarters. So we have to respond to some of these things. Because it's not so. For example, Mr. Speaker, I went in one village, met an old lady that I know very well. She, she, she could be my grandmother. And I call her granny. And this particular constituency I went in, the, the old lady told me the um, um, weekend before, she said, um, Premier, I didn't know that you were like so. I said, what happened? She said, my district rep used to give me a little stipend every month, but he said that you cut out the money. And the Minister of Finance ain't a good. I said, Granny, you think I'll do that to you? She said, I don't know if you do that to me, but you do it to the district rep. I said, Granny, I didn't do that. I did not stop the money. When I went and checked and do my little backdoor check, find out the rep stopped it themselves to go do other thing with the money. And then blame me. You see how my name is getting these things? And then blame the Minister of Finance that, that, that he took away the money. Had the people in that constituency, the old people praying to God against me. God bless that he's the only true and fair living judge that he know that they were praying, praying in innocence, but it wasn't the truth, so he couldn't blame them. In that district. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the games that they play with your name and your reputation and even your life. Some of 50% of the opposition over there. And then they come and they, they smile with you like they, 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 they wish the best when they're out there. They're trying to almost get you physically harmed with some of the things that they're telling the people, knowing it's not true. Not saying that everything you're going to agree with the government with. But you know when you're in opposition, you have a little more time on your hand. I was over there for years that when you're in government, but Mr. Speaker, when you go, you got to go and tell the people, look, I, I could have gotten up many times, Mr. Speaker, in the opposition and go after the government. Sometimes I tell them, no, I agree with the government there. I remember when the Premier then was going to the UK to, to um, deal with the beneficial ownership and other things, and he asked me to go with him. We went in meetings, and there were times in meetings that if I want, I could have taken a lead and go in a different angle, but we were there together. There's times when you have to have some kind of a principle and rules for engagement of war. You can't have get power, try to get power at all costs. And I've met some other persons on the street, Mr. Speaker, because of things said in here and things said by 50% of the opposition again, because there's always that 50% I'm hearing that make it sound that this government just out there squandering the, the people's money and, and doing all kind of things. Don't talk about the, 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 the consultants. We, they, they had a field there with that. They went out and lobbied to every radio station they had. If a dog were passing, they would have talked to it. You might say that's their right. But I had never seen some of that same 50% went out there and championed the cause against COVID-19 and asked people to be vaccinated with that same zeal. Or tell those who are not vaccinated to make sure that you improve your immune system. They didn't went out with that same zeal because when it started, they were hanging on the safe side that the majority of people were against the vaccine. And we don't make it mandatory, don't get me wrong, but, but it was a challenge at first. So they played on the safe side for votes, that 50%. And they stayed with the majority who were saying that we weren't going to be vaccinated till when they recognized now lately that wait, some persons are dying and I need to make a little shift. Now they're over here and they're ambassadors. That's good. I like that. But you still have some things on your hand from your behavior that could have been avoided. Mr. So speaker, I have to say some of these things because this morning when I got up, I reached work early and I was done to work there. Going and I turn on the, one of the newscasts and I, I heard, I, I didn't hear a thing about the Virgin Islands, um, Virgin Islands Investment Act. All I heard 
on the news or the traffic turn around. And then the junior minister, the uh, minister for works, come on the back trying, trying to do his justification. He did well. If you don't know that this wasn't in isolation, it sounds good when you isolate these things out of the news and play them. But this was during the debate of our Virgin Islands Investment Act. And I ask anybody who have any shred of common sense, which is the all of our people, to tell me where that fit into the Virgin Islands Investment Act. It doesn't, but again, playing with the minds of the people, playing with the minds of the people to make sure that they're going this, get the people thinking negative about everything with the government. So, Mr. Speaker, I had to clear up those areas because this bill brings accountability for investment. It, it, it strengthens good governance. And, Mr. Speaker, we have a government here that we are a little quiet, and some of the people who use a democratic right to support us are a little quiet, so sometimes they mistake our meekness for weakness. But they know during COVID-19 that there are financial um, challenges all around. So people grab on and any kind of negative information they hear without doing any kind of checks. And that is what 50% of this opposition continue to do, go out there in all manner of things you're hearing. And some of them you can't even get some of them turn around because the people believe it. Even when you bring them the paperwork and show them it is not so. But that one with the old people, them with that, that district vote, to me that was the lowest thing I've ever heard. Man, when I got in my car, after hearing that I shed a tear, I said, look how, look how you could be walking innocent in a country and people hate you for things you didn't do. But because they have a fraction of the opposition who intend that they want power at all costs, intend to destroy anybody's name with anything, with all kind of gossip. All you have to do is tell the people that you use the district vote to go do something else. Um, seniors, they can't get that money anymore. But no, blame five. I was there dealing with the teachers. And I asked the teachers, how come some of these schools ain't paint? They said, well, when they went to some of the fellows, they tell them that they ain't have no money for painting, go check for he, he moved the money and gone with it. You mean to paint a very classroom and gone with the money too? I mean, how, I, I, I'm, I'm premier, but I'm only human. How wicked some people could be with their mouth. And then what, 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 what gars me is that some people telling me don't answer these things. Leave them alone. I don't answer all. But man, if I don't answer some of them, I go puke. How in the world you could don't go do your work and then blame the Minister of Finance? And if that was a situation where you didn't come back to the Minister of Education and also let's get it rectified. And then turn the teaching fraternity over to the government. And then some of the same 50% opposition over there fueling the, fanning the fire. Yeah, man, go for them. Go for them. They, they, they give up money for consultants, they give up this for that, and they give up that for the other, and they ain't have none for you. They ain't telling the people that the consultancy money was not new, it was already budgeted for, and you're just allocated by a name. We can do like them for years, give out consultancies, and don't tell the people of the Virgin Islands a world what they were doing with the money. Give it out to friends, family, spouse, and others. And don't say a word about it to the people of the Virgin Islands. We could have done that. Instead, we, were, we went and got it announced, and from there, it took on a different life. And some people still believe that. Mr. Speaker, that's why I have to come and, and, and address some of these concerns here while wrapping up this bill, because they were put out right here, right here, um, in, on the floor of this house. And uh, when you see them get put out on the floor of this house, they know what they are doing. They are trying to sensitize the minds of the public to feel that this government, to, to feel that this government 
doing negative things and nothing with sense. Mr. Speaker, so allow me to tell you some of the things that has happened. We went over, Mr. Speaker, to Joseph and Dyke, um yesterday, Mr. Speaker, and it was the Minister of Education going with the uh, Premier's office and, and the RDA to show the people of Joseph and Dyke in another public meeting, because we had numerous of them building up to that. We had one where we let them to know when we just got into the office that we will be doing the school. They didn't believe us then. And I can't blame them. That was from 2017, Orma destroyed the school. They're not in a good condition where they are. And even before that, there were issues and they were not being um, even heard. So I cannot blame the people of Joseph and Dyke for being in a mindset that this could not be the case. That this, that this is not true. This is just talk. So we let them to know when we come back to Joseph and Dyke, we will be signing to get this project done. And also they said in our other meeting that they wanted a school in the hill, not where it was. So that took a little delay. That may, uh, caused a little delay because the Minister of Health and his team, which we thank him, Honorable Calvin Malone, had to go and swap the lands with the Ministry of Education. It sounds simple, but there's a lot of paperwork involved. So that took a little while. And we swapped the lands from where um, there was a proposed community center that was supposed to go there from the time Big Ben's watch was a clock. Big Ben's clock was a watch, sorry. And he said, well, all right, I'm going to let the school have the hill land and we'll store up for some land down on the bottom that education had. That was done. And then, Mr. Speaker, we went over and we had the signing ceremony. And we told them upon the signing ceremony that when it is, uh, um, the drawings are finished and, and we have all that you have, we're going to come back over so you can see it. They didn't believe us, some of them. And we went over yesterday with the drawings accompanied by the Deputy uh, Speaker, Honorable Neville Smith, the at large, and the at large and junior minister of, 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 of trade, Honorable Shireen Flax Charles, and, and the, the Minister of Education, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley, and myself. Honorable Flax Charles would tell you we went over Justin Dykes, and I could tell you it was quite a ride. <laughs> it was, it, the seas were so high, we had to tack going towards Smuggler Scove. You had to think we were going Caribbean, and then tack back and tack there and tack the other. But all of this for the people. When we were coming back over, Honorable Smith said, Lord, it's so rough, he want to catch a plane, but I had to tell him he don't have an airport or some likes. And when we went to that meeting, Mr. Speaker, and we displayed the plans with the RDA, which I give them full credit, Mr. McMaster and his team, we saw the people of Joseph and Dyke say, and I, I quote, and my members will stop me, we are pleased that you have got this far. And if you can pull this off with the construction now, the VIP must have, government must be commended. It must be left alone. Am I correct? That's the words from the people, not from me. And the media was there. So they will play that, um, when they get a chance, unless somebody tell them don't play. And Mr. Speaker, I told the people of Justin like that I want to go through some things with you, and if it's not so, say we didn't do it. But if this government did it since 2019, say yes. Junior Minister, remember that? I said, Barlow, yes. Hmm? Yes. And I told them if we didn't do it, say no. Now, this is dangerous because the media was there now. So if you know you didn't do these things and you're going in front of people from Justin, like don't do it because they're brutally honest more than most people. They're going to tell you where to go if you're lying to them. So I went on the list. I tell them, did this government since taking office repair and refurbish the administration building on Justin Dykes and make sure that finally was named after the one veteran? They yelled out, yes. I tell them, did we promise you that we were going to build a school in Justin Dykes and we're going to get the plans drawn? They said, yes. Did we come back and make sure that we swap the lands for the hill lands, like you say, you want a school in the hill and, and uh, with health and education so the school could go in the hill? Did we do that and hold a meeting to get your blessings on it because that's what you wanted? They said, yes. 
Did the plans, um, did we come and sign when we were doing the plans for the, with the RDA so that they could handle the project? They said, yes. Did we have the plans drawn? They said, yes. And may I add here, Mr. Speaker, that Tongue and Country Planning already approved these plans. So now they're going out for tender. So they're going to, the person's going to bid on them, as we like to say. And we told them that it's going to be three months at least for this process to happen. So look for the signing of the contract somewhere in December. I didn't say January, but I told them in December. Because I told them that when this is posted, somebody going to say that we're only doing this because of the election by the time the construction starts. By God, by nightfall, somebody do it. Who wasn't in the meeting. I tell them because of normal people, they're not going to watch what it takes to get to this stage. They're just going to say they're doing it because there's election coming. That time we have been battling, got a heavy delay for a year from COVID-19, year and more, but still came forward. And I asked them, Mr. Speaker, did we build a new building for ports so that the government could have a multi-purpose entity there to do many business for government, electricity, everything else? They said, yes. I said, did we have a gold seal program over there with HLSCC, with the junior minister, Honorable Sherry De Castro, who helped Ms. Davis from HLSCC, and um, get that program going with the tourism and Mr. McCoy and all of them, the gold seal professional certifications, where we certified restaurant servers, certified guest room attendants, certified kitchen cook, certified front desk representative, they said yes. We even talk about the 24-hour water and jeopardy with the reservoir being full. They say yes, but by God, the devil is such a busy man that this man, he busts the pipe them. <laughs> After they don't say yes, so the Minister of Works will announce later on and send a press release out that they're in the middle of fixing it. So, so, so that one was yes up to last night, but this man, the pipe's boss, so we're going to fix them. So don't worry, jeopardy, those don't get fixed. But at that time, the answer was yes. We asked them, didn't this government grade the plantation road, so, which was there closed up for years? They said, yes. Did this government asphalt the road at Dark Hole in Justin Dykes? The persons attending, which was a decent crowd, said, yes. I asked them, did road rehabilitation on two undermined roads on the east end, wasn't that done? They said, yes. I asked them, did the fire station get repaired since this government was in office? They said, yes. Mind you, you know, it was up to them to say yes or no, not me. I put myself on the line with this. And then I told them, well, this is not a yes, but this is a, a, a soon to come, which is the back road, soon to be addressed by public works department, some other works to do there. They didn't answer there, but when I told them it's soon to come, they said, okay, we can't, we didn't see that one yet. Then I asked them, did we do a solar library done in collaboration with Unite BVI? They said, yes. Did we train staff for swabbing of numerous residents and tourists at the clinic in JVD? They said, yes. Are we currently training additional individuals for the administration, to, for the administration of rapid tests with some from JVD? They said, yes. Did we recently renew contract for the transportation of solid waste from JVD? In the public meeting, they said yes. And I'm opening myself to the public because anybody who was to the meeting will notice. And the ministers and everybody. So if it wasn't so, I challenge those who were there to come say that they didn't say yes or these things didn't happen. Because you could find them. And didn't we approve a lot of number of homes for repairs and rebuild currently at various stages? Some in design, some approval and construction. A couple of them said yes, one didn't see their house yet, so they said no, but the rest said yes. And we have the free, more visits now to, uh, by, by the labor team that wasn't asked to them, but that's also something that's happening that, that, that the Ministry of Labor with the minister there that was never before. And more visits by the elected officials than in the past overall. Mr. Speaker, that sounds, does that sound like a government just talking? I ask this house and all the opposition members that are present, does that sound, does that sound like a government
that is just talking. And I will ask that the camera show how many people in the opposition voted for this. Show the, show the people how many of them voted for it because show time has already left. And I ask the opposition members, does this sound like a government that is just talking? All of you out there can get up and answer. I even won't get to go into what's happening over in Virgin Gorda. That's what another time. And what's happening in Anigara, where the sister islands have been able to receive balance. I don't want to go there, but we repair the police station in Anigara. We repair the basketball coach through the RDA in Anigara. We repair the administration building in Anigara. We, we, we pay a couple roads there in Anigara. We fence the recreational ground from, from those animals that were going in there and making some deposit and one, to withdraw them, we had to use a shovel. The, all of that in the Anigara since we have taken office. But you're hearing them telling the people this is a government just talking. I ask the opposition again. Does that sound like a government just talking on any gather? Then you have Virgin Gorda. Oh my, the list is long. We repaired the administration building in North Song. We repaired the administration building in the valley. We repaired the Jeffrey Keynes basketball court. Some of these through the RDA, some of them otherwise. We helped finish Lee Road. In the in the Orleans, we fixed the the, the, the the reservoir in that song. We, we we fixed the Nail Bay Road. Also, Brigada Flax Secondary School has been fully refurbished and fixed, and even some work I think on the playground was done. Mr. Speaker, I would I would stop there. We even ain't talking about those other projects in between because there are many more. Many more. Even here at Tatola, when they're there talking, we repaired more recreational grounds in the in two-year period than any other. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put this out there to, to those since they want to give us a track record of their own. And I can't blame them because if persons want to speak about us in the negative, that is their democratic right to do. But if we have an English tongue in our mouth, we're going to shut up and let them get away with it. That is on us. And I, this government has done more public consultation on bills. Despite all the same, but government, this in government, the other and the third and the one or two, two hours they have out their back in. This government has done more public consultation on bills than any other government in a four-year period, we only have for two. Check the sites and look at them and see. So much so that one of them accused me when, when the first cohort of people were leaving to go to, to the US VI for the vaccine, one of them come and said, all you all like to do is take pictures and photo up with a young lady. I said, miss, you're correct, but it's photo up of things that have been done because all you just do is go to Facebook and post the things what you feel we're doing bad. So since you're taking care of that side, we're going to take care of the side we're going good. Because some people think waiting to get validation from those who never see things that they're doing as good. Some people waiting to, to get a high till those people validate you. No, you'll never get that. It will never happen. You have to respect them. That's a democratic right. But you can't let them get you down. Sometimes I just smile and say, well, all right. Sometimes I say certain things that are correct. That I say, well, all right, we need to look into that one. But you think I'm going to sit down with our government here and let them define us as talk with all these things we've had? That is why we have come up as a government with a fact sheet, just the facts. And we release it from now till when this government goes time finds a time that is convenient for us to call and ring the bell for the next time
because we have enough to put out every single week at a, that are just the facts. And we put that out this week, Mr. Speaker, just the facts, we put it out. And when we put it out, Mr. Speaker, I was amazed with so many good comments on it. But what also had me amazed, Mr. Speaker, is that some people actually asked me, did those things actually happen? I tell them, yes, we're talking from 2019 to present. We had trained, personal, and certified the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital Laboratory to deliver 75,000 COVID-19 tests and counting. Those were correct. We had made stimulus available to families and businesses. Those were correct. Although some of them out there saying that we thieve the people and money with the stimulus. I ain't have a dime for a soul. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm going to say it when I hear some people have it that um, the CO is all, all that there is. I'll say it when I go in there. I try to help the people of the Virgin Islands with my government. And not one of them who gets a stimulus could tell the people of the Virgin Islands that they come back and give Andrew Fry no kickback. Because that's what the 50% of the opposition out there on the street saying with others. And, and that's what they tell their partners who they're working with to undermine their people. And then call in their face and make them look like they're working for them. Those who have ears here, they'll know what I mean by that. Initiated and approved the ongoing public service salary review and job reclassification exercise. I want to put a pin in that, Mr. Speaker, because a lot was said. And I sat here from Monday down to this Monday, and I said, Ward, but since they troubled me first, I got to come back here a minute. When you go and look at the public service, they're riling them up now, trying to make them turn against this government. When we are the ones who went in and said it's time to pay the increments, as soon as we went in, approved the 2016 increments, and we had a meeting with the teachers last night, and so far, I'm glad to report that we approved the 2017 one, and the, and the, the Ministry of Finance is working on that, and they should be getting that soon, because we had said before, but now we, we tell them, look, make sure by December, make sure that they get that money. We're the ones who approve the monies to get ahead with the job reclassification and in the, in the review of salary. Those who are now out there singing to them that they love them so, were there for years and didn't make sure that they in, increased their salary or had a salary revision or job reclassification. Now they're telling them that they love them. Now they're telling them, look, squeeze the government because they're squandering your money that could give you a raise. And telling them all manner of things that are not factual. But even with revenues down, we're saying that we are praying and, and reassured in God that there are brighter days coming. So do the job reclassification and the salary revision to make sure that when that time comes in a couple of months, which I could see some rough times now, and that comes that people could be paid in the public service for what they're worth. And that is not something for us to do. Because the public service is none of us. We're just making sure the money is there. We know that everybody's passing the buck and all of a sudden everything is ours. But, but under the Constitution, the public service is, is, is not directly under the elected officials. So we approve the process. We, don't, we approved the money and the process in cabinet. But it's up to now the constitutional heads, which is the governor and deputy governor's office, to speed up that process so that the results could come in. And I have told everyone to speak to all your representatives to make sure that you could find out how your division could come to the table and negotiate. And last night when we met with the teachers, we assured them that uh, they're going to be able to come to the table and negotiate on behalf of teachers, just like every other post profession. And we'll be fighting and championing the cause for that, Mr. Speaker. And then I heard one get up here and said that we went out and hired consultants, but can't give the Attorney General her, her lawyers. She can get up and say, objection, Your Honor. But we had never denied the Attorney General, nor have we taken up monies that we did not have to get any consultant. Those monies were already budgeted and they were going to be used anyhow, but we were honest enough to tell the people how we're going to use them. So it's like we had $1,000 and we take $300, 100 for one person, 100 for our next, and 100 for the other, put a little title on them, and then went forward. We then went to look for no new monies. But if you hear them speaking, it sounds like, oh my, we're going to take care of the Attorney General office, but this Attorney General 
will be neutral. She wouldn't say it. But if you give her a chance and you prick her hard enough, she'll tell you when the thing just reached her. She'd come in and meet it, so. I've seen so many departments allowed to dwindle over the years. Now everybody in the middle of a crisis want to blame this government and want all the departments financed one time. Not everyone, some of them. Knowing the climate that we are in and knowing that this thing has been allowed to happen for quite some time. That's why I firmly believe in that not only a job reclassification and a salary revision needs to be done, but a human resource audit needs to be done to find out if we have square pegs and wrong holes and how do we get wrong pegs and wrong holes and square pegs and square holes. But nobody holds who is responsible for the public service. They don't hold them responsible for anything. They always come back and let them send them back to the elected officials but they are all people, so we have to take care of them. So we started to, to, to finance that, and we're waiting on the findings. We're waiting on the findings. And then we'll be able to address the salary of persons. And may I add that the last salary revision they had was in 2008, when the Vodnaz Party government was here. If it wasn't 2008, it was 2002. But one thing I know, whenever it was, let me tell you about the 2008, because that's another date. One thing I know for certain, it was under R.T. O'Neill. That or no? That is safe to say that. Now we're right here championing the cause, because he had believed in the salary increase, and it was to be 15%, but we had to do 7.5. And, and the other 7.5 was supposed to come, but then we lost the government, and those who are now telling you that they love you had never even given them a 7.5. They never even gave them a half. They never, half. they never even gave them a half of the half. They never even gave them a half of the half of the half. But now they're telling them in the opposition, go after them, let them get a hold. You see the hypocrisy? I have an old man in my village, he just said, you see the hypocrisy, he just said. Then, Mr. Speaker, we're working on that, and we're going to get it done, and we're going to diversify the economy because we need more money. We have to adjust the budget this year, I'm sure. But that's because of COVID-19, but we're going to keep pushing. We have... We, we, we're gonna, we're gonna get it done, it's a rough times. It's not an easy time from the time I become premier with my government members, the minister I had said best, we even didn't get 30 days to, to breathe good. Every minute it was something else. The worst pandemic in 100 years, yet there are those 50% of the opposition are wrong, creating mischief from East End to West End, District 1 to District 9. Oh, they ain't doing nothing. Oh, the shit, they, oh, that and the other. Oh, the tunnel. Don't mind them with a the pandemic. Oh, they have money. Oh, this, oh, that, oh, the other. Oh, the infrastructure. Yet they tell people that went with $26.5 million of our money and no infrastructure ain't fixed. And want to blame the minister walks? No. Man, must people get right up. When I come in here this morning, my mother tell me, don't let your voice raise. Man, I'm sorry, but them, them get me right up. Them trouble me first. But I'll be on my voice now. Because I could hear them in her chair saying, my God. So I'll be on my voice. Repaired many sporting facilities. Will we get back to that? I don't mean com Commission Ongoing National Sustainable Development Plan. We have a National Sustainable Development Plan sponsored by the United Nations going on here in this country. We tried to make it non-political, but we launched it so that every school child, every person in the country can give a voice to say how they want to see the country in the next 15, 20 years. And that report will be coming forward soon so that we can be able to put ourselves in a better position as a country when we want to go for funding, that we have a full national development sustainable plan. So I just smile when I hear my asking what the plan is, what the plan is, what the plan is. We must be have a set of Rip Van Winkle over there. Because every week you're advertising the National Sustainable Development Plan. Plus with COVID-19, tell me what country put in a plan that's still using it and then had to change it sometime on a dime by the next day or the next week. Show me that country. The great America right now, <laughs> this is trading me with that joke, I can't call the name. One person was telling us, man, it's so bad, I'm told I went up to 1,600 in, in some in some cases, you got to come out, I got to get something done or come out from, down, come out from down there. 
When they raised up in America, where they were, guys are good friends of ours. They said, Lord, I must say, I gotta get back home. It's bad up here. Y'all have it on the hand, like I gotta get back down. The great America, who does print money in financial crisis. The great UK, who have their money in financial crisis. Persons are dying from COVID in those countries like rain. Persons are dying all around us and we had all stint of it and you never know when another spike would come so we have to continue to move fast with some of these initiatives so that if a spike ever comes again we could continue to keep the economy going that's why that's why we're holding these house meetings that's why we're pushing these bills the e-government bills so they could do business from home and in the consumer protection and many of these bills we're not doing them just in isolation we're doing them to diversify the economy because with COVID-19 is not going anywhere very, very soon as far as we can see we can only do what we have to do along with prayer, which, which, by the way, I need to say. People laugh after the 21 days of prayer and fast. But look at what happened with those 21 days of prayer and fast. We were all the way heading up without an end in sight. And people could say, is, is, is measures put in place? Yes, that helped because God put us here physically to do certain things. And the deaths were... So many deaths, man, that still, that still bothers me up to this day. Most of them were my friends from COVID-19. It was so bad the, the, a few weeks ago that people used to ask you, who dead today? That's how bad it was. Imagine we have reached a point in a country where people are asking, not, not who died now, you know how we're asking, who dead today? Then after a while they were asking, how many people died today? You could imagine that conversation in the BVI that we grew up in, where one death sometime for months would, would, would be on our mind. And then we were looking at two, three, one time I think four at one time dying. And you telling me that, yes, there are those who want to evaluate me because that's up to you. Don't, don't evaluate me. Evaluate yourself with God. But I firmly believe in Jehovah Jireh that his prayer, his mercy and hands on us as we prayed as a whole territory for those 21 days. Stop and slow down and stop and slow down and stop that death angel. And help us to get our numbers down. I think the Minister of Health would correct me. I think it's 31, the last official among his. And the last day of the fast, as if it was planned, was the day before Emancipation Sunday. That's timing by God, because it wasn't, it wasn't calculated that way. And I know that he helped us. And what I'm amazed by is, I know that persons on block, heavy, especially on one side about me when I say these things. Because they have some people think that if they block 100 blocks on me, that negative that I'm going to somehow say, my, 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 my. But seven people are saying the same thing seven times a day, 49. Fictitious name behind it, blocking seven times a day. No, 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 no. I'm going to respect their views, but not, 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 not what they're trying to do. I understand they're trying to play with our minds and the people of the Virgin Islands' minds to make us think that other people will save us, that other people will be our, our, our savior, that other people are going to rescue us. When we grow up in a country where the our forefathers believe in, in, in God himself and walking by the spirit of the brow, now there are those among us that, that want people to think that everything that we touch is, 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 is corrupt and everything that we do is, is illegal and everything that we do is, is not right. There are those among us who feel that way and, and, and nothing you do can get them to change their mind because that's the way they have been programmed about us with our ethnic background. But, but we have seen that once God knows the truth, that no man, no matter how powerful the, the, the entity that they have come from, could stop you or what he has for you in this country. That is why this Virgin Islands continue to move forward. And I'm telling the people that we are our own saviors. If you feel that somebody is not walking up, get somebody else of your own and put them in. Stop. Have the mindset that has failed many in the many parts in the world, that if you allow persons from other entities who tell you that they come to fix you and straighten you out when you pull the curtain across in their backyard, it is more filthy than you can stand with your nose. 
But telling you that you're a crook, criminal, and thief, and come and concentrate on you and only the areas that they feel can play with people's mind to be able to portray you in that way. This has started from 1834. It didn't just start. But when you speak about it, no. People think you're talking about COI. No, man, that's just a modern tactic. I'm talking about what has been done to us from long, and we keep overcoming it and building a BVI. A BVI where a lot of persons have come and got a good head start in life. A BVI where financial services is, is doing great and continues to strive despite all the attacks. A BVI where we sweat and toil to put those houses on the hills where when they look at them, they feel all of us just running drugs. Let's call it what it is. I'm the leader of this country. I've been quiet too long with some of these things. This is how some of them feel about us. And if you who think that you have done it a different way to what they're saying, not what they're saying is so, join up with them to tell them, yes, go for Tom and go for John, but leave me. They will come for you after. So we have to understand that we build this together and we could continue to build it. Don't get me wrong. We can't do it alone. And we have to respect each other. And we have to respect all denominations, all, all, all different ethnic groups. We have to respect that. But we also have to know that we got this done and got it the way it is. That's why I said, Mr. Speaker, that I can't go for juryless case, cases. And I'm not hiding that. I, I will fight that one with, with discussion and research. I'll tell you why. If all people could carry, I said it up before, and they, they went in the newspaper and the blogs and they, they went at me, so, so get your fingers ready again. Could carry what they feel is enough information to start up a COI or anything else. Then they could go in the jury box and decide whether we're guilty or innocent. You cannot have democracy be railroaded in that fashion. Don't tell us that we're too small so we know each other. It's not our fault that we know each other. In 1834, when they let us here have the slave ship, they left us here. So we had to know each other because some went from east to west, some went to God's west, some went all about. So we had to always know each other. It didn't just start. And they started for us when they let us here. Whoever it is did it. And although we know each other, we also know what is right from wrong. And we know that we have some principles that we have to abide by. And the courthouse have put many people in prison through the jury. And, if, and, and all we have to do is to continue to pick till we pick the right one. I'll never support that. I know there's some taking notes now and saying, hmm. But I'm telling the people of the Virgin Islands I can't do it. Because we have to be careful when we allow one judge or two or three judge whose ethnic background may not be the same of ours as ours and determine the future of anybody here. I see that as a slippery slope along the lines of democracy. Nothing personal to anybody. I see it as a slippery slope and it's something that I'm hearing all the time trying to come forward. I cannot support it. The same people who I could... This is why I had to tell people you telling me that you hope to see how straighten us out. And, 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 and you telling, some of them telling me, whatever I know, I'm telling them. That's good. If you feel you know something, talk. That's what we put with the blood there for. But then you're telling me that some of them don't have enough confidence in you to sit down in the same jury box, jurors box, and, and determine if someone is guilty or innocent. Think about it. Think about it. But I was under just the facts. We also passed the e-government suite of legislation presently being implemented, which means you could stay from Justin Lex and get out of Virgin God or anywhere and do business with government or even the states. We're in the middle of getting the positions now, see if we could get them filled and see how we can help um, diversify government working and, and increase revenues in that area by leaps and bounds, which has also paved the way for the digital economy, which is multi-million dollar economy. 
We renovated the LS Adority Turnbull building at Elmo South High School, which was there after 2017 with hurricanes, implemented the online work permit program. Well, the new program gone in, and yes, there'll be some kinks, but I ain't worrying about that. They'll work themselves out. Again, there are those who want to concentrate on the kinks and make it look like the initiative and what we're trying to do don't matter. So we renovated the Brigada Flax Educational Center Division in Bojangada Secondary Division. I said that already, and we started the Eastern Long Look Sewage Project. Well, as for that, as for that, I am amazed how quiet people take that one and then have us looking for monies now for the Eastern Long Look Sewage Project after taking, I think it was $8 million from the monies to do the Eastern Long Look Sewage Project under the last government that's 50% of them are over there now in the opposition and asking us questions about the Eastern Long Look Sewage Project. And when you give them the answer, they get up and they get jumpy. Eight million dollars and put it in the pair pack project. Eight million dollars. And left the people in Eastern Long Look to walk in the middle of number one and number two. And the water from both of them although one is already water. And then join the bandwagon to ask us when we can get it fixed. The Minister of Transportation and, and the seven district rep were working together on it and they found four, we were able to put $4 million to get it going, to take back some of the same money from ports just before the, the pandemic set in heavy, to start the Eastern Long Look Sewage Project now you're seeing questions coming left from right from the same people that took out the $8 million asking you if this part of the plant working, if that part of the plant working, trying to make people think, well, they're just wasting time. One time when I was in the opposition, a certain minister had asked tell me something and I smiled it off. He said, you asked me all these questions, I wish the government could ask the, the opposition questions. I went to opposition, then I find that so funny. But sometimes, given this makeup here, one, I just said, it ain't a bad idea sometimes. Because some of the answers we want, like I told the third district rep when he was asking me, is right there by him. But Mr. Speaker, I bring these up because in the middle of COVID-19, where there's so much pressure to run a government, where there's so much frustrations arising because of lack of money. Not only in the BVI, but everywhere. Mr. Speaker, it's only God alone could help us. That's why we don't continue to pray and fast. And let who want to laugh, laugh. We have another one coming up very soon, a repentance one. Put us in a totally different dimension when we finish with this one. And we spoke with the churches with it, and the churches organizing themselves will be organizing themselves very soon. So, Mr. Speaker, I say all of that to say that I do apologize to you, Mr. Speaker, if I didn't speak to the bill all the way. But based on what all was allowed to come out on the floor of this house, which had nothing to do with the Virgin Islands Investment Act, which was being debated, I had to come to respond. Because persons gravitate towards melee, and they, some persons, not all, let me, let me correct the statement. And bad news travels fast. I think they said that um, the old saying says that Lie goes wrong the world twice before truth wakes up and gets up to put his boots on to get out of bed. So, Mr. Speaker, we coming from behind with a lot of gossip, especially on the street. Yes, we have a lot of areas to improve upon, but we're going through the worst pandemic in the last 100 years. Money, money is not as plentiful as people think. Last year, it was quite a task to keep all the public officers hired. 
without any of them having to, to be sent home. This year we're trying, Mr. Speaker, we move forward, but we have to watch expenditures because some people are behaving as if we're not in COVID-19 and just spending, as we say, willy-nilly, and then somehow think that you could just apply for a SAPA. And Mr. Speaker, we're telling them, no, these things, we're not in the same era. But I don't blame anyone, you know, for anything we're going through. People hear me talk, they'll say, oh, he gone and that is against CY. Not at all. I'm for a transparent commissioner inquiry that will yield a just outcome. 100%. But just like in the past, in our four parents' time, the only way that they could have conquered us was if us had helped them conquer us. So whatever happens to us, us, if I may say it that way, is who contribute to it. So we now have to emancipate ourselves from the mental slavery that some of us find ourselves in. Because no one else is going to do it for us but ourselves. And the late Robert Lester Marley said that. And Mr. Speaker, I found it so interesting because there are those who are going to continue to try to paint you as if you're a troublemaker, a mischief maker, etc. But Mr. Speaker, when you analyze it, I found a, a um, I found what you call a a message, and I want to read it because it's nothing about being racist, but this, Mr. Speaker was from in the 60s when this was said. And I'm trying to find the author. But the author, Mr. Speaker, I haven't been able to locate the author as yet. So I want to say plain out that I'm not racist, but I want to read it. Whenever a black man cares for his people, empowering them and preparing and preaching truth, they will always focus on his mistakes, his flaws, and his contradictions. They want to illegitimize his message, stop his progress, and the hope for the people. And that was in the 60s. I ask everyone, is, are we falling prayer for this? in 2021? Are we falling prey to this in 2021? Mr. Speaker, we have to make sure that whatever put, is put to us as a people is about justice and not just us. I would say, Mr. Speaker, that this investment bill now, if I can end with it, it provides a clear and transparent framework for investment in the territory, thereby further strengthening good governance. It provides for an efficient dispute resolution mechanism involving investment, to provide for a mechanism for inter-ministerial coordination on regular provisions and incentives and support mechanisms for investments. One of the most frustrating things for any investors, whether local, foreign, or a combination, is sending them to about seven to 10 different parts of government. And they're trying to spend millions of dollars. And everyone moving at the speed of a total. And we lose investments as a result. But this one-stop shop through the commission, which is going to help coordinate it, will allow for things to move much faster and much more efficient and allow for, and more transparent and allow for persons to have confidence in the system as good governance will be the order of the day. 
and is to promote sustainable economic development and growth through the mobilization and attraction of domestic and foreign investments. Again, there are persons who are out there trying to scandalize this bill as it's only looking to bring in foreign investors because the word investment is there. We were so programmed again in our minds to think that investment means foreign investors only. That's how we are programmed as a people, some of us, and that we as locals can't be investors in our own country. That when we hear the word Virgin Islands Investment Act, the only thing that we know is foreign investors. So persons get up in this house and play on that and pray on that. But Mr. Speaker, this is going to be able to say what the parameters are for each investor. So Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all for their debate, even although we didn't agree in some areas, that's part of democracy, and it shows that we are maturing as a country. And Mr. Speaker, I now say, Mr. Speaker, that I beg, I now move that this bill go into the committee stage so that we can go through it clause by clause and now allow us to further diversify our economy, Mr. Speaker, with this another piece of legislation. Thank you. Thank the, I thank the sponsor of the bill for his wrap-up. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the bill shortly entitled Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020 be now read a second time. Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. I therefore call upon the clerk to read the bill for a second time. This act may be cited as the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020. Thank you. Pursuant to Standing Order 55-1 of the House of Assembly of the Virgin Islands, the bill now stands committed to a committee to examine it clause by clause. This House is now in committee.
I come out and we finish with it, and we just close until yeah, until after 10. you. This Honorable House now resumed its sitting. Honorable members, we have spent a number of hours going through the Virgin Islands Investment Act, and I now call upon the spot of the bill the Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to report after some lengthy debate and also in committee stage, I'm going through the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020, I mean 2021 now, but 2020 when it was introduced originally. But I want to say that um, very pleased that we have been able to find the right balance of making sure that we can further strengthen good governance and accountability when it comes to investment and to make sure the persons understand that investment when that word is used we tend to think that it only involves foreign investment when we talk about local investment and local investors um, with sections to deal with those with foreign investors. We have the definition of any, um, of, of all the areas that may have been concerned with the bill. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, having said that, I thank all members for their input on both sides of the aisle. Mr. Speaker, so I beg to report that the bill entitled Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020 has passed through committee with amendments Mr. Speaker, I move that the bill entitled Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020 be read a third time and passed as amended. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the bill entitled Virgin Islands Investment Act 2020 be now read a third time and passed as amended. Those in Mr. favor? Mr. Sir, Mr. Sir, Mr. Speaker, before you do that, could we get a division of votes, please? The Premier have asked for a division of votes. I call upon the clerk to call the names of all members, 13 members in the House. And of course, those in favor will say aye. Those against will say no. In keeping with standing order 40. Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes, member for the 6th District. Okay, you got to speak into the mic so we can have an accurate record. Aye. Honorable Shireen D. Flex Charles, territorial member. Honorable Shari B. De Castro, territorial member. Aye. Honorable Andrew A. Foy, member for the first district. Aye. Honorable Julian Fraser, member for the third district. Honorable Carvin Malone, territorial member. Aye. Honorable Marlon A. Penn, member for the eighth district. Honorable Kai M. Reimer, member for the 5th District. Aye. Honorable Neville A. Smith, territorial member. Aye. Honorable Melvin M. Turnbull, member for the 2nd District. <laughs> Honorable Mark H. Vanterpool, member for the 4th District. Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, member for the 7th District. Aye. Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, member for the 9th District.
the clerk has handed me the tally. According to the tally of members present, there have been 10 ayes and 3 absents. Therefore, the bill is carried. In keeping with the process, those in favor, those against, the motion is passed. I call upon the clerk to read the bill for a third time. This act may be cited as the Virgin Islands Investment Act 2021. The bill has been read a third time and passed with amendments. At this time, honorable members, we will take a recess and hope that by Thursday when we resume, we can finish off with the 11th sitting. I think it's day five or six with the 11th sitting. So with that said, this honorable house now stands in recess until Thursday at 10 a.m.